Hey, Mark Appel. Welcome back to Sports Spectrum, buddy. Jason, great to be here. Always good to see you. It was a year ago when we had you on this podcast. You had not yet made your major league debut. You're going through a lot. And, uh, and this year, 2022, has been so much fun from the outside to watch you achieve that dream, make your debut. And we're going to walk through that in a little bit. But I thought it'd be good to just start back maybe in the beginning of 2022. Mm-hmm. Because that's kind of where we left off when we taped the podcast last year was a little bit of uncertainty. I remember saying, Mark, you know, I don't even know if I should ask you this, but what are your hopes for 2022? Because you really didn't know. Yeah, yeah. I, I, last year, I was in a really, really strange spot going into the off offseason. Um, you know, I, I was coming off of my first year back after a three, three and a half year hiatus from the game. I say three and a half because that last year in 2017, I was injured most of the year. It didn't really feel like a full season. So it was almost, it was really almost four years from my last pitch in 2017 to my first pitch in 2021. And I played through the whole 2021 season. And I had a blast. I was back playing baseball. You know, I was in the clubhouse. I was traveling. I was doing all the little things that you take for granted. Um, and the thing was, is I just didn't play well last year. I had fun. I was healthy. Yeah. So I, I accomplished my goals, but I, I wasn't playing well. And, you know, you start thinking about time and you're like, man, I'm 30 years old. I turn 31 next year. You know, I, I have other goals in life. You know, I, I don't, I don't really know what baseball is, but I, I think I knew kind of deep down. And I, I was last time we talked, I was kind of wrestling. I was like, mm. do I go back and play this year? Do I move on with my life? What kind of, what is the right decision? I think, I think just deep down in my gut, I was like, man, I think I really need to give it a full another year to f- have a lot of peace about just moving on with my life. You know, I, I spent all that time rehabbing surgery, um, the, the time away from the game, getting back to where I feel like I could go play a full season and be healthy. And I was like, I think I need two full years before I'm like, just good with it, you know, <laughs> and ready to move on. Yeah. And, uh, and so I, I feel like I kind of reluctantly stumbled into spring training being like, you know what, this is probably going to be my last year playing. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it was, it was a really weird off season. Um, but I, I think once I made that decision, I was like, all right, well, this is going to be my, you know, this is going to be my last year playing. So like, let's try to make it fun and, and have a good time and, and work hard and see what can happen. And then something happened. I mean, you got to Lehigh Valley, which is AAA, which is where you were for a portion of 21. Yeah. You get there in 22, and you start pitching really well. Yeah. It was that as I don't want to ever say it's as much of a shock to you as it was maybe to others, because you always expect to do and perform well as a. I have I to imagine. I don't know if that's true it's for not me, true Jason. As a professional I, athlete. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I. I I think I'm probably not like most professional athletes in the sense that, yes, I was drafted first overall. Of course, the expectations were incredibly high. But by the time I was where I was last year, I'm like, well, I haven't had a year. Like, I haven't had a great year in minor league baseball. Yeah. You know, like, I don't I don't have anything that I'm like really necessarily like, oh, yeah, I'm, I've g- gone and showed that I can really make it, you know. And, right. and so right. – uh, and minor league baseball is just kind of a different animal. It's like some guys end up playing just because they love the game. And, you know, by the time you hit free agency, you can actually make enough money playing minor league baseball. It just takes a long time to get to that point. Yeah. Um, and, and so I was like, you know what? Like, I, I don't even have high expectations for myself this year. Um, <laughs> and so a lot of what happened this year kind of came as a shock. Um, it, it wasn't this like, oh, I don't think I can do it. It's like, I, it's like, man, if, if I go out and I play my game, yeah, I think I can do it. But it's like, I, all evidence from the past kind of suggested that, yeah, it'll probably be another like mediocre performance type of year. And as, if you can have fun and be with your teammates and try to, you know, love the people that you're around and try to make an impact while you're there, then it's still going to be a successful year. Yeah. Um, I just never thought that it would be successful on the field in the same way that it felt like it was successful off the field. Was there a moment in AAA, though, where you're starting to throw well and you realize, OK, something's yeah. clicking here. And and then I'll ask you a second question in a minute about if you had even a thought or an inkling about 
the majors. But start with that first. Is there a moment yeah. when you were like, wait a minute, something's clicking here that maybe hasn't clicked before? Yeah, so not to get too technical on the baseball side of things, but uh, you know, spring training, I, I wasn't it, like I didn't feel like I was just dominant in spring training at all. I, I was like, this is kind of me getting back, you know, ready for the rest of the season as spring training usually is, you know, or it should be. <laughs> right. Uh, a lot of times it's now I'm trying to make the team. I'm trying to do this. But uh, by the end of spring, I was like, man, something just feels off. I haven't been able to see it in my video. Like, let me go ask, talk to our, our Phillies, you know, development coaches. And one of the coaches gave me a couple of things to think about, a couple of things to work on. So I started putting those into practice. And then, you know, I, I got up to Lehigh Valley and they're like, yeah, you're, you, you know, you're going to be a full-time reliever now. So I, with the lockout, there's, I mean, there's so many contextual things that that was like, oh, I, I had no idea until literally the first day of the season. Yeah, Mark, you're a reliever. Hmm. And so, so now I, I'm learning a new routine. I kind of have new things to work on. And um, I, I literally was just like, I'm just going to try to do my best and try to have fun because at this point there's no expectations. <laughs> I like anything could happen. The, you know, the likeliest outcome is that I just play in AAA all year. I have a good time, you know, try to, you know, be a part of a team that maybe win some games and, you know, and then probably move on with my life. But was there the moment when you said, Oh, wait a minute. Yeah. Maybe the, even the majors is a possibility here. Yeah. So I think the first couple games, I'm like, wait a minute, these mechanical changes, like I'm starting to throw a little bit harder now. Yeah. And guys are taking worse swings off of me. And I'm like, so, you know, one outing to another to another, and then you're starting to string together some really good outings and you're putting up zeros and you're striking guys out and you're not walking guys. And you're like, wait a minute, I got to It's June and I've got a sub two ERA and I've gotten like four or five saves and I've done my job every time I've gone in, I've, I've had a successful game. So it's like, like, I'm like, I don't know, like may, yeah. maybe there's something there. Um, I was like, this could be the start of something special, but again, I don't ever want to necessarily assume that just cause I I've seen how fragile careers can be, like how quickly things can either get, get, you know, go well or how, how quickly things can kind of go off the rails. So I'm like, let me just focus on today. Let me just stay in today and have fun and then go to bed and do it again tomorrow. Um, and something that helped me kind of stay in that mindset was a conversation I had with my brother back in spring training. He was kind of going through some stuff in his own, his own life. And we're talking about this idea of God in the old Testament when the, you know, Israelites were wandering around in the desert and God provides them bread from heaven, the manna from heaven. Right. And like the only rules is like, don't keep any for yourself. If it, if you store it, it's going to spoil overnight anyways. Right. But like God could have provided bread that lasted 40 years and just give them a massive storehouse and be like, here you go. You're good for the next 40 years. You won't have to worry. You won't have to, do. but it, like, that's not how God works. He mm. wants us to trust him every day. He wants to, us to like basically empty the tank every day and then trust that he will like, when we rise tomorrow in some, you know, just way that only he can do, he's going to give us the strength to be able to get through that day and then do it again the next day and the next day and next day. And then before you know it, you're like, wait a minute. I've like from January of 2022 until June of 2022, things are like vastly different. It's like, I feel like <laughs> there might be a, an opportunity to, you know, play in the big leagues. Yeah. And it's, it, you know, is overwhelming. And then that next day that you wake up and we're talking to Mark Appel here on Sports Spectrum, one of those next days that you wake up, as you're referring to, was the day that you get the call. What was that day like? Describe that day. It was a, it was a day like any any other day. You know, by then my friends were starting to be like, "Hey, are you, like, are you gonna get called up? Like, what's the deal?" I'm like, "Man, I'm not on the 40 man roster, and if you don't know baseball, being on the 40 man roster is like a big deal yes. because that means you are one of the reserve players that can go up and down." Um, and if any, if the, if the team is going to put you on, then they have to take someone off. And that means they have to cut someone and, and teams don't really want to do that. Cause that means another team could. And so you really kind of have to force your way into the 40 man roster. And the fact that I wasn't on it, I was like, I'm not holding my breath. Like I could probably pitch this well the rest of the year and still never get called up. Like an, 
uh, you know, a door needs to open, an opportunity needs to come. And that happens a lot with a lot of guys. Right? Absolutely. They pitch really well, but they're like, why didn't I get that call? Exactly. Sometimes and, it just and, doesn't happen. And then you're in a different organization and you're not pitching well, but they, they need people because guys are getting hurt or whatever. Yeah. And you're like, man, this, like, sometimes it's just getting lucky with the opportunity. Perfect time. And yeah. S- and so, uh, but yeah, that, I mean, that day I was like, you know, it was funny in the bullpen that game, uh, I, I didn't pitch, but, you know, we were just talking and um, guys were, you know, encouraging to me. And, you know, we were just all talking about, like, things that we can do to get better. And, you know, we, we were talking about what I was doing. And, you know, one of the guys, uh, Aaron Barrett, he's a, he won the World Series with the Nationals in 2019. And um, just a really, really great guy, became really good friends with them. He was like, I don't know, man, like, just just keep doing what you're doing, you know. And, you know, you just – like try to find little things to get better at because you're pitching really well. You're doing a really good job, and uh, and and so it was it was kind of funny that we had that conversation. And then after the game, sure enough, our manager comes in the clubhouse and um, kind of gives this speech where he's like, because we lost that game, but we fought till the end, you know. And we play a lot of games, so it's like a loss isn't devastating, right. you know. We can got to move go. on to the next day. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so, but he's like, he's like, guys, if you guys don't show up every day to play like show up prepared, all this stuff. Like we're just going to keep losing games like this. And, and that's not acceptable. And not only that, but like you're never going to go to the big leagues. And like that's what you're here for. You want to get to the big leagues. Um, and then he like kind of pauses and he goes, um, but that's, that's exactly what this guy's done all year. And he looks at me and I like I had chills. I'm like, he's like, Mark, you're, you're going to the big leagues. <laughs> and I'm like, wait, so you're saying after – you know, All the highest expectations in 2013 when I got drafted basically to being out of baseball at 27 in 2017 and then coming back and that like all of that culminated to that moment. Um, like I was overwhelmed, like almost immediately started crying, like uh, hugged everyone and then and then went and called called my family and let them know. Uh, it was, Lots of tears. I would imagine. Yeah, it was a, it was a special, special day. Um, and one that you know, I, like I was, I was at this point in the season where I was like, I don't, I don't need my debut for me to feel like joy. And right. like, I get to play baseball right. and I haven't felt like that in a long time because I've had all these injuries and dealt with some of the pressures of just life and pressures of performance and stuff like that. And that year, like the first three, four months of the season, I was like, I'm just enjoying baseball for baseball because I love playing the game and I love being in the locker room and I love all these things. And, uh, and I think it was just like God's kindness to me. It was like his favor. You know, he's like, he's like, I know you don't need this, but, um, I'm giving it to you. I'm giving it to you anyway. That's such a cool story. I think about it too, because we were watching sports spectrum and our team were always watching for the guys that we have, you know, good connections and relationships with. And when you got called up, people forget that doesn't guarantee you're going to get into a game. Right. And so you have to have that mindset. Like I want to be ready. I'm so excited to get to the big league park and you got media that wants to talk to you because it's an amazing story, but that doesn't guarantee you're going to get into a game. And it took a little bit for you to get that shot, but then you got that shot. So just walk us through being a big leaguer. I know you also did a wonderful job kind of writing your emotions down in social media and documenting a little bit on how grateful you were just to have the opportunity. And I could sense that was intentional because it was almost like a journal that you wanted to make sure that you put down so that you didn't forget yeah. how amazing that moment was. Yeah, it, it, was, it was as much for me as it was for other people to read. Um, I probably have way more written that is only for me <laughs> uh, in, my, in my journal. But, yeah. um, you know, there, there's, there's little things every now and then that kind of I get to experience and I'm like, man, this is like, I know that this is like okay to share because I really think a lot of other people might identify with this or might understand this or might see part of my, like their story in my story. And, and my goal in that is not to just tell my story, but like to encourage and to instill some sort of hope, not in necessarily their circumstances or that like they can persevere or overcome, but like they, that God is with them and that God loves them. Yeah. And, um, and that like the things that we like try to find our identity in is not the things that will ultimately satisfy, you know? And, um, and so, so 
one of the things from this year too was just like riding helped me connect a lot of the dots over the last, I don't know, 10, 12 years of my life. Um, and it, it's actually been something that I've, it's like a kind of a newfound passion that I've enjoyed and getting to write more and just even reflect more and um, realizing that I, I don't really consider myself like that special of a guy or sure. anything like that. But, but I realize I have a unique story, especially in the, in the game of baseball. Um, it's like somehow I went from like first overall pick, you know, being, you know, kind of the guy that was expected to be part of this Astros franchise to hopefully win a couple world series, which they have now. And, <laughs> you know, ironically, yeah. yeah. And, uh, to traded to injured to out of the game and then come back and almost like from this guy who was expected to do all these amazing things to this almost like underdog, like, wait a minute, how did things flip so, so far and so quickly? Yeah. Um, but, but it, it's, it's really taught me a lot. And I, like, I really am really so grateful that God allowed me to go through all the things that I've been through. I wouldn't have chosen it for myself, honestly. Um, and I know a lot of people say that, but um, yeah, like some of the consequences, side effects are just dealing with like, depression, dealing with anxiety, dealing with a lot of these like, you know, things that I don't feel great talking about. or I don't necessarily even feel proud about, but I'm like, man, this is, this is part of what God's trying to do in my life. And maybe he's doing it so that I can help or encourage someone else along the way. Yeah. And suddenly you got a lot of microphones and a lot of eyeballs and a lot of followers. We talked about social media last year, as we talked about you kind of sharing some of what you were going through in 2021. And then 22 happens, and I was looking at your stats again, and the thing that stands out to me, it was six games, obviously, in the big leagues. And nobody will ever be able to take away those six <laughs> games. Three games finished, which meant you were in some of those games that were, um, you know, larger amount. I mean, you were on a team even then when you were playing with the Phillies who had the offensive capability to just put up 15 or 20 runs if they really were having a good day. But what sticks out is 1.74, that ERA. And uh, again, if you never make it to the big leagues again, you'll always have that moment. I'm hoping you do, and I'm hoping you got a career for another seven or eight years in the big leagues. But what was it like to get into that first game and pitch? Because there's that picture. We, you and I, just a little behind the curtain here, we were looking at some of the pictures of your experience this year. And you had one that the Phillies sent you, and you're kind of smiling and looking up. I think you might have shared it yeah. on social media, too. Yeah. And I looked at you and said, I can see what you're thinking just in a picture. Yeah. And just in terms of gratitude. But what was it like to be on the mound that first time? Yeah. Um, it was. And it was at home? Right? It, was it was at home. home yep. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I got called up. The team was in San Diego. I, I flew across country. Yes. Yeah. It was there for like 18 hours or, you know, 36 hours you know, like a day and a half, basically not even honestly, it was like a Saturday night game and then Sunday day game. And we flew back and, um, and then, uh, yeah, I, I was like, all right, well, we have an off day Monday, Tuesday, maybe I'll get in Wednesday. Maybe I'll get, you know, I, like I wasn't really sure. Uh, and we had the Braves coming into town and Philly's Braves have had a kind of, we've been dog. It's been dog fights all year, yeah. you know, and even in, in the, you know, in the playoffs is a dog fight. Right. Mm -hmm. So, I'm like, all right, well, I know what I kind of know what my role is on this team. It's basically to eat up innings so that our high leverage guys don't have to go into the eight one ball game. And I'm like, like there's not gonna be an eight one ball game <laughs> in the Braves, you know? Yes. And um and but sure enough, uh we were we were down four to one uh going into the ninth inning and um it was on Wednesday on the twenty ninth and uh yeah, and so um Rob Thompson, our manager calls down and is like, all right, Appel, Appel's in the game. So I'm like, I'm, you know, I have adrenaline basically ever since I got called up. So I'm like, I'm already, I'm probably two pitches away from being ready to go, you know? <laughs> and, so, and so I'm, you know, I, I, I'm down there, I'm, I'm warming up, I'm doing my routine. I'm trying to breathe, stay focused and all that stuff. And then, you know, get the third out and I'd run in and um, again, uh, my, my buddy, Aaron Barrett, who is in triple eight, you know, he's been in the big leagues. He's been a reliever. So I was really leaning on him and we talked about debut stories just cause you know, we know guys are going to have opportunities. And one thing that he said that I really uh, took to heart was he's like, before you like step on the mound and lock in and like try to get these guys out, take, 
10 seconds, five seconds, whatever it is, and just spin around, take in the environment, like you're never going to get that, uh, that moment again. And so that's what I did. And that's like that picture that I showed you was during that, um, where I was just like able to kind of breathe a little bit and be like, man, like God, I, I literally never thought this day would come for a while, for years. Didn't you face a big part of their lineup too? I'm trying to remember this, but weren't you facing, I mean, the Braves had a great lineup yeah. anyways, but I, I, I forgot if I came in at the four hitter or five, I think it was the five hitter, Marcelo Zuna, yeah. uh, through through a, a sinker that was my pitch this year and um he swung at it first pitch and just hit an absolute line drive right at our first baseman and caught it i'm like oh my gosh but it's like ah oh, i got that out yeah. finally <laughs> right one pitch one out once you get the first one then you can go um and and then i, I think i maybe struck out the next guy next guy got a you know i think ground ball base hit up the middle and then ground ball out uh, to finish it. Um, and it's weird, right? Because you lose the game, but yeah. there's such a great moment for you. And you know baseball is long, so yeah. was there a way to, to appreciate that from a team element even in the midst of a loss? Yeah, so I think a lot of the guys on the team, you know, it, it, was, in, it was in a weird spot because uh, a lot of the veterans that we have on our team are guys that, like, I've played with in the minors or played against or in college or something like that. Like, we're, we're basically the same age, mm -hmm. except they're – you know, seven, eight, nine years in the big league career, and I'm one day. Uh, and then a lot of the young guys were guys that I played with over the last two years that were like the new prospects coming up through the system. And so I felt like I had a, a decent relationship with almost all the players, and I think they all kind of knew my story. And um, But, yeah, when I came off the mound, it's like they, they were all there to greet me and just, like, congratulate me, even though we were losing. Like, we want to win the game. Um, but – you know, they're, they're, I think those moments and it's a long season. So you can have these moments that are like, man, that's, that's really special. And, and I felt really loved by my team. Um, and yeah, it was, it was just a really overwhelming emotional, uh, night. Um, you know, my brother and his wife got to be in the stands. My parents got to, were, were able to watch, mm. um, they, they, the only reason they weren't there is that they were celebrating their 40th wedding anniversary and they were in an airport on the way to Europe to go on a trip to celebrate. Incredible. But I got a, I got a FaceTime everyone and it was just, you know, it was, it was, it was a really, really special night. Um, one that I'm yeah really thankful for. What do you have from that night? Did they give you a Jersey and a ball and yeah. all that? You got it, everything? Jersey, first strikeout ball. Um, you know, the, the lineup card they framed for me. Yeah. yeah. The Phillies do, do an amazing job to, you know, commemorate some of those moments for, for their players. So it's really cool. That is so great. Yeah. Um, you finished out pitching six games, like I said, 10 innings, 10 and a third, five strikeouts, a one, seven, four ERA and watch the Phillies make this incredible run all the way to the world series. You weren't on the team because you had some injuries and, you know, other things, but yet you're still watching this team that you played six games with, but really the organization that you played the whole year with make this run, yeah. uh, Real quick, what was that like? Because I know you actually attended, was it game yeah, three? three? Three, four, and five. All, all three of them. Yeah, all three of them in home. Philly. So yeah. what was that experience like watching them make that run, the team that you had been a, such a part of, and then actually being at the World Series game? Obviously, next year we hope you're actually pitching in a World Series right. game. <laughs> but still, pretty cool thing to happen. Really, really cool. I, I don't know. Like There, there was this, this, this overwhelming sense of joy and gratitude for this whole season. So it's like, literally everything else that happened was just like, I, I think I, I gave a quote in, you know, in San Diego when I first called, got called up, I was like, everything else is gravy. Mm -hmm. My mom tells me that all the time. She loved that quote for whatever reason. And it's like all of like the world series playoffs, all that stuff. So I'm like, even though I'm not on the team, it's like, well, my, my role with the Phillies, uh, was kind of to be a, like a support role. Yeah. And so it's like, why can't I also support, you know, the Phillies and, and just being able to like, even just root for them, cheer for them. Cause I, I, I gotta be in the clubhouse. I gotta see the chemistry. I gotta see the guys, um, the talent that we have. And I'm like, man, I, I, I believe in this team. I, I, I know what we can do. Um, and even though I'm not there, it's like, I still feel, you know, connected to the team and, uh, it, it's hard with baseball, you know, just cause you could get traded, you could get released, you, all the things that happen in professional sports. But I'm like, man, Today, I love being part of the Phillies, and and I think that's that's a really fun place for me to be because, um, 
it's easy to like just shelter off your emotions and be like, yeah, yeah, I'm not on the team, so I don't care or whatever. Um, I might not be on the team next year, but I'm like, I'd rather just celebrate the, the amazing things that are happening. Just appreciate it. And then, you know, if something sad happens or bad happens or whatever, you can grieve that. Um, and yeah. I think you get a, like, I think God's not trying to make us these stoics that don't feel emotions or anything. He's like, he's like, no, you got emotions, but I'm just going to be with you. And I like, I'll help you through those things. So I, it was also fascinating that they lost, unfortunately, obviously, but National League champs, but Houston wins it all. And that's the team you were picked number one, but not that this is at all about you, but yeah. the irony of being Houston against Philly you had to have, it, it, you know, some yeah. emotions for you. No, personally, it was, it was really funny. Um, I had, I had a lot of friends, you know, I grew up in Houston I was an Astros fan. I got drafted by the Astros. So a lot of connection. And, and then <coughs> I was supposed to be part of this building, you know, and I, I, I didn't play well. And then the Astros traded me. And so it's like, I think there's a portion of Astros fans that are, you know, diehard that are like, oh yeah, we still love Mark. And then diehard Astros fans that are like, Mark can just go kick rocks or something. And, and then the majority of them don't even know who I am, which is great. Um, <laughs> yeah, but for your own personal world, like yeah. that's that's great. I love hearing that. Um, as we're winding down here, Mark Appel, uh, I thought it'd be a good way because we don't know what 2023 is going to bring. We're not sure what the heck's going to happen. Hopefully you're on the Phillies and you make the big league club and you have an amazing season. But we just don't know. And I think, like you said, the rest of it's all gravy at this point. But Something pretty cool that you're doing, and this was just within the last, you know, few days or weeks that I've seen this on Instagram, and, you know, we follow each other, and I'm seeing your story, and you're like, the van is almost done. <laughs> you have this van, and I'm like, man, I got to ask Mark about this van. This is something that you've been working on for a while, and have some intentional uh, decisions that you've made in moments that you want to create this off season with yeah. this van. Yeah, yeah. Uh it was this whole idea. Uh, I sold my house last off season. Um, cause I was playing baseball again. So I'm like, I'm not living there. You know, last year I wasn't making any money. So I'm like, I, I need to sell my house. Just get that off my, my mind, my, you know, just get it off the plate. Yeah. And, um, and, and then, uh, in spring training, um, or I would say early in the season, I'm like, starting to th just think about the reality of not, you know, it's like you sell your house, you go to spring training, like you don't think about it. So I was starting to think about, it. I'm like, wait a minute. Like, I don't, I don't have a home. I'm, you know, I'm not married. Like I kind of have a lot of freedom in my life right now. <laughs> like, I don't really know exactly what I'm supposed to be doing with this. Um, but really my intention with the van is I feel like there's been so many people in my life that have really made an impact. And with baseball, it's been all over the country. I have friends in you know, Cape Cod when I was playing summer, you know, summer baseball in Newport, Rhode Island. Uh, obviously the Pennsylvania area, down in Florida, um, the mid, you know, literally any region of the country, it's like I've met someone that God has intentionally placed them, you know, in my life at that time to encourage me or to support me or to pray for me or whatever it is. And I just feel so thankful. And I know it's, um, you know, being able to just like go and visit these people, uh, and just let them know like, Hey, God used you in my life in a really cool way. Like, I think that would be so much fun to be able to do. Um, and then also I love being outdoors and, you know, whether, whether you like it or not, I think being outdoors and being in beautiful places is where you can really meet God. Um, and so I, I just want to be intentional with, relationships is ultimately the the goal of it relationship with god and then relationship with others um and you'll live in this van is I that plan, the plan i plan on living in the van <laughs> <laughs> i feel i feel uh half the time i feel like i'm absolutely crazy out of my mind for doing something like this and then the other half of me is like no this is actually going to be really really good it's going to be really rich now's uh, the time because if so, you get married and you have kids someday you're probably not living in a van down I, by the I river i doubt whoever <laughs> i marry will want to live in a van so <laughs> this is it this is my chance are you souping up the van like is there a few little extras in it that uh, yeah i'm i'm not quite as hippie as it sounds yeah. you know there will there will be some some amenities i guess uh you know it'll have a, a full bed like a queen size bed and then it'll have you know kitchen little kitchenette basically a little okay. you know electric burner and you know fridge and um kind of seating it'll have a very cramped pop-up shower uh that i 
I don't know how I'm going to use that because <laughs> I, I can barely fit in the thing You're a big anyways. boy. You're 6'5". Yeah. So um, yeah. I would love to see you drive that to spring training, by the way. Just uh, thinking about... I'm 100% doing it. You're 100% doing it? Doing yeah. it? Okay. Oh, yeah. All right. It's happening. <laughs> that is going to be amazing. Clear water and here comes Mark Capel in the van. Yeah. Um, what's God showing you right now? When you think back real quick, last question. This is just you know one we think about is reflection. Um, but what's the great lesson that you think about when you think about Jesus and in this past year? Yeah. Um, I, I would just say that like God is so good and he's writing way better stories than we could write for ourselves. Um, and also that he's like just really faithful. Um, I think it's easy to say that when you get to experience like a high, but it's like, I, 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 I see God's faithfulness through, through a lot of the lows too. Um, and you know, it's like, there, there's just like a richness to walking in faith. Like we, we want the mountaintop experiences and, and sometimes we get those, you know, and like my story is not to say like, man, if you have faith, like you, you can accomplish your dreams and do whatever you can. It's like, no, it's like I, I had given up on that basically. Um, but I, like, I knew that God was like for me and with me no matter what, no matter what happened this year. Yeah. Um, and, and I think that's really cool. And I think a lot of times we forget that, um, as we're just going through life, it's like sometimes something bad happens or something good happens. And we're like, is God really for me? Or I did it on my own. Um, and we just kind of leave God out of the picture. Um, but he, he's there and, um, and he loves us. Well, now it's part of your testimony, right? Like not just about God, but about, you know, the story that you've lived both as a baseball player, but as a man, as a human, yeah. that you'll be able to continue to live out the great commission wherever God takes you, not just on the baseball field. So that's exactly right. Good stuff, buddy. Well, it's always great to catch up with you, Mark Capel. I hope we have another conversation a year from now. <laughs> Maybe even who knows what will happen next who year. Who knows <laughs> what will happen, but I think it's been fun to, to kind of talk these last couple of years and really been fun to watch you uh, on this baseball journey. Congratulations. Thank All you. the best to you, buddy. And uh, let's, do, let's do it again soon. Sounds great. Thanks, Jason. All right. Thanks so much for watching today on Sports Spectrum. Make sure you click that subscribe button so you don't miss any other videos. And if you want more stories on sports and faith, check out our website, sportsspectrum.com.